Hello and welcome to Flippin' Through the Internet's number one Mad Magazine news, review, and interview channel. And today, we're flipping through Mad Magazine number 119, released June 1968, our price, 35 cents, which is indeed highway robbery. But before we do that, please take a moment, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below while I type in the name, the website that I need to be looking at right now. Listen, liking and subscribing, it's the best way to help this channel grow. If you like these videos, if you like what I do, you like the live streams, all that stuff, you just got to do it. That'd be sweet. Best way. Anyway, want to help me out? Support me in another way? Um, Patreon.com slash flipping through. Link is in the description. You do that. You get a six set of stickers. You get a stencil, which I lost. God damn it. Anyway, um, hey, these are the people that uh, I get to thank right now. That's uh, Misimo, David Strickler, Megan McInerney, Shane Buckley, Bobby Weigel, Cam Hayden, Rob Wilson, Rod Meadsbury, Andrew Goldfarb, Casey Ory, and Little Cozy Nostril. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope that I can keep on earning it. With that, let us move on to this. The whole reason we are here. Wait, no, this is the reason we're here. Me. Um, uh, here's a pretty awesome Norman Mingo cover. Uh, something that I guess at this point in the late sixties, mid to late sixties, you start getting stuff like, um, people interacting with Alfred E. Newman. Um, they move away from just gag covers to this sort of, um, celebrity cover, uh, pop culture cover. Um, I don't know when it actually started happening but this right here this is not um this is not part of the cover yours probably doesn't look like this but i buy cheap uh mad magazines and i like this i like a well-loved mad magazine as long as it has all of its parts in this issue balmy and clod we rib bank robbers they don't they only they own the only bank robbers that they talk about are bonnie and clyde the the hit movie with warren Beatty and some lady. That's like every movie he's in. Is, it's Warren Beatty and some lady. Um, anyway, here we go. Going in one fine day at the park. You don't see it very often, but um, Don Martin's art colored. It actually, it looks pretty nice. Um, there's some certain artwork that I'm just so accustomed to seeing black and white that seeing it in color it just doesn't do it for me. So, I don't know. It is pretty cool seeing his stuff. It's always what really well done. Um, well, I guess because it was colored at that time. Um, some of the stuff I've seen lately is stuff that's colored, like with the Mad reprints. They'll reprint stuff that's black and white and color it. I'm not a big fan of that, I gotta say. Um, anyway, vital features are wonderful. Oh, I know. Some of you guys love to see this. The masthead. Is that what it's called? Um, and making out your income tax form is like making out a laundry list. Either way, you lose your shirt. <laughs> Not me. This year, I got $48 back. That's the way you want to do it. Okay. Um, William Gaines is a publisher, Al Feldstein, the editor, John Putnam, art director, Lenny Brenner is production, Jerry DeFuccio, Nick Meglin, associate editor, it's Jack Albert is lawsuits, Gloria Orlando, Cecilia Morelli, Joan Zecca, Curtis Anderson, Ivan Lodova is subscriptions and contributing artists and writers. Of course, of course, the usual gang of idiots. I will say this, I want to cruise this because I don't get to do it that often anymore. This is like, I would have nailed this. I would have gotten five out of six for sure. Look at that. Mort Drucker, Bob Clark, Jack Davis, uh, Sergio Aragones, um, Paul Coker, and that's Jack Davis. I'm going to be honest, when I looked through it, I didn't nail that. I did not nail that. So anyway, it's always fun when you see. I really enjoy that part. I guess that's like my favorite part of it. Here we have the letters department. I read through this, guys. There was not a ton of great stuff in there. All right, I'm going to be honest. Um, not their best work. 
not their best work taken in some letters. Um, here I have Balmy and Claude, and I know you guys, I always just like flash through these things. I never take my time to look at the artwork and stuff. And I'm not going to on this one, <laughs> but there is one in here that we are going to spend a little bit of time on. I do want to talk about this actually, and this is the writing for this. Who who wrote this? Was this Dick D. Bartolo that wrote this, or was it like um, Larry Siegel? There is something very funny at the end of it. I have to be careful. This is like this issue. The cover is about to detach, and that's this. Um, there is something amusing about the fact that um, so many movies glorify. Not just criminality, like a gangster movie, like a mobster movie, like The Godfather. But that's not about anybody in particular. Whereas Bonnie and Clyde are. And Bonnie and Clyde killed people. <laughs> so, um, you know, look at that. We're young. We're adorable. We murder millions. Warren Beatty, Faye Runaway. Um, Warren Booty and Faye Runaway in Ava and Adolf. Look for it in theaters. Um. Let's go wide. We gotta go wide again. And you know what I need to do? I don't know. I'm gonna see if this is possible. What if I get a button that can just automatically zoom in? Is that possible? One day in the jungle. You want to read it? Hit pause. Now this is one thing. I I can't really go over it because it doesn't read super well. Um, but if big businessmen can deduct big losses before determining their total incomes for income tax purposes, it seems only fair that us little guys should be allowed to deduct our little losses before determining our total incomes for income tax purposes. And so here's Mad's suggestion for an additional form to be added to the regular income tax form for determining minor losses. I saw this and I knew right away that it was Dick DiBartolo that wrote it. Dick, when he first got into Mad, when he first started doing Mad, um, he did a lot of things like this, um, things like resumes, tax returns. Um, there was one that I did in a video, and it was, um, he liked spoofing the form. Um, I get the sense that Dick is somebody who is, um, he had to do a lot of paperwork, and he was resentful of it. So um, he makes a lot of jokes about paperwork, it seems. Um, and I love it. I love it. I think it's uh, pretty awesome that he does. And now we have the kind of classic setup, like the sort of like quick two panel, you know, setup punchline thing. And uh, this is with Al Jaffe. And um, I mean, this is, was this the golden era of Al Jaffe, the 60s? It might have been. I'm not going to pay a plumber when I can fix it myself. Oh, haven't we all been there? Relax, I can go another 30 miles when the needle is on empty. <laughs> That's me. I always chance it. That light comes on, and I think, got a ways to go. I'm going to chance it. I never kiss a boy on the first date, but with you, I'll make an exception. <laughs> I do like that her posture and uh, her expression don't change at all. Neither does her haircut in nine months. You're not leaving already. It's only 1 a.m. Yeah, well, I don't know. These are okay. It, there's something about the Al Jaffe art that is just fun to look at. Um, I don't care if it's only some 10 cent trinket. It's a thought that counts. It's very expensive wine. You may not like it, but just try a sip. They liked it too much. Anyway. I don't know. Hit or miss. And here we go. That's right. You didn't think it could happen again. Like eight videos in a row. Um, we get the mad fad and fetish primer. It seems like everything below 200, every issue that I grab below 200 lately has had um, a mad primer. And again, I mean, what am I going to say this time that I haven't said before? It's you know, the same, it's, it's written like a children's book and, you know, it's like, uh, it's not the type of thing that's funny if you read it every single week, 
Um, I'm sure if it, you know, you read it every other month, it would be amusing. You might forget about it. Um, but this one, what this has going for it that not all of them do, um, I think one recently had Wallace Wood in it, um, is Bob Clark's artwork. And that's pretty awesome. And um, so I'm just going to kind of like scan through here, let you, let you drink this in. Um, chapter one, explaining what a fad is, what a fetish is. Um, chapter two, I don't know. It's just examples of that, right? Now showing blow up. Look at Jackie Onassis. That's a fad. This is a fetish. Rubbing a car with a diaper is a fetish. This? Stuffed animals? Well, maybe it was a fad. Now, with furries, it's a fetish, and it's disgusting. Oh, it's, oh, you're, mm, that makes, like, that makes, that makes Jesus sad. Um, shoes? Jesus? Wait, what? No, that's not Jesus. <laughs> that's a man being tortured. Um, I don't know, it's just fun. These illustrations are great. The writing probably is funny but I'm not going to read it. <laughs> They're not shy. This is like um, the secret swastika issue of Mad Magazine. And I didn't silence my phone. What a dope. Jeez Louise. Um, now moving on, this one is one that I am going to spend a little more time on, and that's Mad's 1968 All-Star Basketball Teams. And um, they did this all the time where they would have like, and this is more when, I think it's like a holdover from when Kurtzman made it into a magazine before it really found its voice as Mad Magazine in a magazine format. Um, and so they would have these things like a magazine has where it's like a big setup to the, to the larger article that has um, jokes. I don't know how to I don't know how to explain my thinking. And so you get all of these characters that you will read about momentarily. Jack Davis doing this artwork. Lord save us, Jack Davis, the sweetheart of the South. And boy did he do a good job. Again, it's like text super dense. Um, but hey, feel free to hit pause if you want to read some of this stuff. So this is um Minute Bowl. I'm sorry. Lou Shorty incinerator uh, from Alabama Lutheran height 11 foot 1 and 3 quarter inches weight 111 pounds 111 and 3 quarter pounds has set a new collegiate record by being called for gold tending 86 times in a single game after officials were forced to rule that his head and shoulders were interfering with the downward flight of the ball by being stuck in the basket Later, when dislodging efforts failed, Incinerator became the only student on the Alabama campus, or any campus, to attend classes wearing an iron hoop and a blackboard. Well, he just looks so... <laughs> I get, like, I'm reading this, and I love that it's cut off at his waist. Um, Arnold Nimbleflick is the nation's leading scorer so far this year, averaging 68 points a game. Flick proved beyond all doubt that there is still a place for the little man in basketball. Flick also proved beyond all doubt that if some runt, five foot six inches tall, wants to average 68 points a game, his best bet is to hunt for a college that has a basketball team, but no other male students. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> when I read that, that's when it finally clicked what was happening. <laughs> He's playing on the girls team and, uh, the other, the other team is just chasing down um, the female players. Wonderful. Here's Claude King Kong Bumbleman. Otto, the enforcer, Wizniak. Established an all-time record by fouling out of every game within the first three minutes, shattering the old mark of 4 minutes, 1.6 seconds, held by the late Jerome Capone of Cicero Mechanical and Brutal. Wind is neck skill in leaving followed opponents unable to attempt free throws, plus his persuasive talent in dealing with official scorekeepers contributed much to Chicago's impressive 27-0 record, despite the team's mid-season loss of 12 players to the armed forces and other federal agencies. 
I have a question. How come Chicago no did is the mob just not a thing in Chicago anymore? You never get that reference. They were so strong back in the day. And then and now you, you never hear talk about it. And it goes on. Look at these illustrations though, man. It's like I don't know. He's pretty awesome. I love the way that he draws people's bodies. Like um the what is that? Anatomy? He's so good at anatomy. It's like um even like when it's cartoony and comical, like he's doing it right. Like it doesn't <laughs> he's getting everything. Like Look at this guy's shoulder. It's like he's got every part just right. It's just exaggerated. That dude's a, he's a gem. Here we have, what is a square? Now, this is like explaining what a square is. And a square, for, for you young folks reading Mad Magazine, watching my videos, a square is somebody who's not hep, okay? They're um, uh, somebody who is, um, not with it, you know. How I don't know. I don't know how to explain it to you. Just, just Google it. A square is like a dork. No, not a dork. It's something else. A square is almost like a yuppie. A yuppie is a square. Um. Yeah. All right. Whoops. This is the best part of it, though, right? I mean, no offense, Arnie Kogan, but here's Sergio Aragones doing just. Some great little side illustrations for all of these examples. Buying flamingos, that's a square activity. Not now. Now it's ironic. And it's, it's you're cool if you do that. But back then, it wasn't ironic. And you were a square. Going to see Doris Day? What? They can kiss my ass, man. Doris Day. Nah, don't come after my girl like that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's funny. I like that. God, these these illustrations are just oh disgusting. I'm sorry, guys. Here's a hair of mine. Horrible. I'm sorry. These illustrations are just so great. I wonder if like people realized <laughs> getting their <laughs> their photo taken with the chef at Howard Johnson's. Oh my goodness. I wonder, I wonder if people at the time, when they saw Sergio Aragones' artwork, if they were like, if they knew, like, yes, that this was the dude. He was going to be the man. That's what I'm, I'm very curious about. Nothing to see here, guys. You know, you're really a parent when, and I have to be honest, I'm not going to read this parent humor. I'm just not, I'm not, I don't find it funny. Um, I love Paul Coker. I think he's a great artist. I like the style. Parent humor is not funny. Now here we have the songs of wealth, possessions, greed, property, and creeping materialism. This is mad of the sixties. They were so good at this, at pointing out, obviously, they would lampoon um, advertisers all the time and they would point that stuff out. They would like uh, roast P the guys on Madison Avenue, um, all of the advertising firms and all of that. But they also were so good at talking about materialism, keeping up with the Joneses, whatever you want to call it, like that desire for people to just buy things uh, as status symbols. And this is a, such a great example of it with George Woodbridge, George Woodbridge on art. And I mean, there it's songs. So it is, um, it's Frank Jacobs, obviously, um, you know, the poet laureate of mad magazine. Let's see if there's one that I can sing. Let's see. I get a kick out of you. I get no kick from champagne. I don't know how it starts though. Serenade to a car, born free. I don't know that. I like that MG though. Um, Ballad of a mink coat. I don't know that. Uh, Four leaf clover. I don't know. Oh, I know this one. Hymn to a rich aunt, sung to the tune of "You're a grand old flag." <clears throat> I 
Hey guys, and leave a comment down below. What's your favorite song I've ever sang? <gasps> she's a mean old bag. She's a nasty old bag. And forever she's filled us with hate. But we treat her sweet. We kiss her feet. We tell her we think that she's great. I don't know how it goes after that. Let her curse at us. We will not raise a fuss when she starts in to scream and to nag. For we're all counting what we'll get from when the will of that mean old bag. Ah, you know what? I went in too cocky, guys. I thought I knew that song. I didn't know that song. That was embarrassing. You know what? Just give, give the video a dislike. It's okay. I understand. Um, here is the mad portfolio of some famous protest buttons we'd like to see worn we would like to see worn by some famous people conceived by max brandel max brandel is somebody that i want to talk about a little bit i i can find very little information about max brandel but max brandel was really good with wordplay um from what I know, he didn't write a lot of stuff. Like, you know, Frank Jacobs writes a lot when he writes. Um, Arnie Kogan writes a lot when he writes. Um, all these old guys, they write a lot when they write. You know, Dave Berg writes a lot. Um, Max Brandel isn't like that. He doesn't write a lot of things, but he's good with words. And he would do this he would play around with the English language a lot. And there was a great um, paperback book by um, Max Brandel playing with words. And I think this is good. He, he always had like these very simple concepts. And we're going to check this out. So um, let's just zoom in. Now you're going to have to, I don't know who this is. Is that Barry Goldwater or something? Um, a dumb Johnson in 68. That's his protest button. Um, here's Jerry Lewis. To know me is to love me. Here's some lady. Draft George Hamilton. The famous actor? Here's my guy, Nixon. I love him. Impeach Reagan. This is back when they were both Californian politicians, okay? Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's Robert Kennedy. To hell with birth control. Uh, and here's his wife. Pills, please. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Is this the, what's his name? Isn't this like an Egyptian politician or something? Uh, Jewish power. And then uh, hire, hire the morally handicapped. There's uh, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. That'd be cool. That'd be a cool name. I'm a plain clothes hippie. Italian power. I don't know who this is, but I like her. She might usurp Doris Day. Um, Mary Poppins is a junkie. Stamp out first marriages. Um, oh, here's uh, Billy Graham. I almost said Lindsey Graham. Billy Graham. Tax the churches. Uh, Twiggy, ban the bra. <laughs> um, uh, war is good business. Invest your son. Like, that's pretty intense, right? And then my favorite one, uh, it's a little blurry, but it says, support mental health or I'll kill you. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe some of these, if I were in this world, like if I were, if this was at the time, I might, um, I might get it. I might think it's more biting and, and satirical. But those last two, I mean, they make the whole thing. Um, I love Max Brandel. If you like Max Brandel, give a thumbs up to this video. Um, here we have the personalized absence notices. Again, uh, Tom Koch, he writes a lot. Um, but this is not something that reads very well. Um, and here we have the invasioners. Now, I'm not going to read this, but this is the other one that I, I mentioned that I wanted to talk about. Um, because we have Jack Davis. We have Jack Davis doing, I'm guessing, a television show. Maybe a movie? Oh no, for the TV viewers, the nightmare began when the sponsors bought 
this idiotic program called The Invasioners. Um, Jack Davis isn't super great at caricatures. Um, he's, you know, it's like you compare him with other cartoonists, let's say Mort Drucker, right? Mort Drucker always gets it. Um, I actually had a conversation with Howard Chaikin recently, and it came up, and um, how good Mort Drucker was, and how Jack Davis um, was not good at capturing likenesses, that's all. Um, but what Jack Davis is really good at, and what we hardly ever get to see from him in Mad Magazine, is something that he was extremely good at at EC, which is the visual storytelling of a comic book. And so I think I've complained before where it's like Joe Orlando is a great artist, but the work that Joe Orlando um, had published in Mad Magazine was never even close to what he produced for EC. Um, it's just a fact. And with Jack Davis, it's not, I mean, his was his stuff was equally great at Mad Magazine, but it was great for very different reasons. And so you have this, like, golly, look at that panel. That's so cool. He's looking in through that window. Boom, then he pops in right there. It's, it's so much fun. I was so thrilled when I saw that he got, that he was doing um, oh, this poor cover. This poor cover is about to just crumble in my hands. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun. And no offense to um, Mort Drucker, it's really fun to see other people doing the, um, the send-ups of movies and TV other than him, you know? I mean, he's great at what he does, obviously. Um, nothing I can say will, will change that. And I wouldn't say anything to change it, even if I could. I have that power. And I wield it with, with restraint. But boy, oh boy, that Jack Davis, Invasioners, chef's kiss, it's beautiful. And here we have, um, what dedicated group does a lot of planting, and yet nothing ever comes of it. Now, as you can see, I had to refold this because this child, this ignoramus, um, they didn't, they folded it all wrong and it, and it didn't, like the words didn't line up. It was just so frustrating. So I refolded it for you guys. This is what I do for you. Oh, wait. Oh, it went back to the bad fold. God damn it. So. What dedicated group does a lot of planting, yet nothing ever comes of it? The Mafia. And one last thing, if you would indulge me. Um, here we have, who is it? Who's the artist here? Oh yeah, George Woodbridge. George Woodbridge colored. You never get to see that, and it looks great. I wonder who colored him. Um, it really is just fantastic to see his work colored wow we maybe he did it he probably painted the whole thing obviously like when you look at it a lot of this is painted boy oh boy what a treat that is this issue had has all sorts of like fun departures um and hey i hope you enjoyed this remember please hit like hit subscribe leave a comment down below thank you so much for watching toodaloo